Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to create a dynamic array, and populate it with a list of random numbers. This program uses a lot of pointers, so, you get another chance to learn some great technology. If you want to see more programming training videos from me, where every video teaches you what you need, that are easy to follow, easy to understand, proven steps that will make you learn, you will benefit by subscribing to my channel. I will not disappoint you. As you can see, this is a very simple program that loops over i 20 times and then calls the ran function. The ran function will generate a number and then mod 20, so it'll generate numbers between 0 and 19. As you can see at the bottom with the two comments, that is the output for me running this program twice. Notice the numbers are identical. And while they are random numbers, when you use it just like this, it produces the same pattern each time. So every time I would run a program, this program, that same number pattern would exist. In this second example, you can see that I've introduced a new function, srand, of time of zero. And what that does is it kind of seeds the way the ran function works. And what I mean by that is now, every time ran begins, it will always begin with a new pattern. At the bottom, you can see the output of me running the program twice. Just to remember, just because we are generating random numbers does not mean they will be unique. This video will teach you how to make a unique set of numbers. Let's step through a program that can generate a random list of unique numbers. Okay, so we're going to hit a F10 here. Compile the program. It's building. And now we're saying, hey, let's build 15 um, items that are going to be random. Now, the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be going and getting some memory from the heap. So we sent in 15, so that'd be 15 times four is 60 bytes. So 60 bytes just got taken out of the heap. And what got returned was the address where that array starts. That's all that got returned. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna assign some pointers and they're gonna point at that address. Notice here that the address got point to is CAB10. That is the address that we're pointing at. Now we're about to point these other three pointers into that same address. Now this is an example about how to do this using pointers. If I wanted to use arrays, I would be making a different kind of video. So this is a heavily intensive pointer application. Now notice here that I'm saying for i equals 1 to count, count as 15. What I'm going to do is notice that the current is pointing at CAB10. That's a memory address. And what I'm saying is, hey, at that memory address, look inside there and put negative 1. And then increment my pointer. And I'm going to do that 15 times. I'll meet you on line 32. Now that I have all that initialized, and notice here, that my values are all set to negative one. That's what I wanted to initialize them as. So now what we're going to do is we're going to begin the actual, you know, making random numbers. Now, the first thing about random numbers is if we don't use the function srand, then it will always generate the same pattern. We don't want to do that. So srand will kind of make it so we get a unique starting position each time and sequence. So, I'm now going to get a RAND number, and that went out there and got the number 12. And the 12, this is my first time. I don't have any numbers in my list yet. So I come down, and here is where we kind of do our first bit of magic. Notice between line 43 and 62, 20 lines. In between these 20 lines, I figure out where does that number begin, or is it a dupe? Remember, we want unique values. So F10, and I look at the first current B. Current B's value right now is negative one. 
The reason why it's negative one is because we don't have any numbers in there. Current B, bucket, and pointer at root share the same value right now. And you can see that here. They all share the same address. And look at the value is all negative one. Let's continue. F10. And I'm going to set last there and then I'm going to break. And when I break, I come down to this, has it been used? That number has never been used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that number 12 and I'm going to stick it into the last B. Last B, look, it's the same address as the previous ones. Then I'm going to increment last B. Notice that it took on four additional uh, bytes. And I'm going to increment M. M is my number of um, uh, unique characters that are going to go into an array. F10, I test it, and then I'm done. Now I'm back up to the top. I'm going to get my next random number. And this time my random number is 14. And then I drop in there and I do the same thing. Now current P gets pointed at the root again. So notice that it went back to CAB10. And then when we do that first test, is current B null? Am I pointing at nothing? No, there's 12. Uh, what was the number in there? There was 12. That was the first number. So it is not negative 1. There's a real value in there. So F10. Now, is that number that's there, the number that we just got, is 12 equal 12? Or this is 12. This is 14. They're not equal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increment that B value. Notice here, I'm looking at CAB10. It's going to go down to CAB14. Watch that, F10. Notice CAB14's value inside of it is negative 1. And that is where we're going to do an insert. So I come up, it's negative 1. I come down and I say, has it been used? Nope. So I'm going to put that value in there, increment it, and say now I have two numbers in my list. Then I come back to the top. I'm going to keep doing this until we m equals, what number do we send in? We sent in 15, until we have 15 numbers. What I like to do is put a breakpoint here and just run it a few times. And m is now at 5. And now let's circle around one more time. Let's see what happens. Now the value is 4. So I'm going to come in here, F10. I'm going to start my pointer over. I'm going to look at the first cell. The first cell says, hey, it's 12. Well, if my value is 4 and it's not 12, i got to keep adjusting my pointer. And notice here, I encrypt my pointer to the next bin. And that number is 14. So then I come up and I say, hey, are you 14? Are you 4? Nope, I'm 14. Oh, now I'm 13. Uh, now I'm 6. Uh, now I'm 0. Now I'm 9. Now I'm 5. Now I'm 2. So we had already put a few numbers in there, right? Now I'm 8. Now I'm negative 1. Now negative 1 means this is the address. See this CAB34? That is where we're going to be putting this next value. That value will be 4. So if you can remember CAB34, that's where we're putting 4. F10. And then I'm going to come in there, and what is last B looking at? Last B is at CAB34. F10. Increment it. Now last B is at CAB38. And M is now set to 10. So we have done 10 numbers so far. And do we need to keep going through this list and showing you how it does if to make sure it's not? I don't think so. Step through it. I'm putting the source code in the um, website. You can download it. You can step through it yourself and see it line by line. I'm going to break here. F10. And now, like, my list is full. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point at my root again. Let's do that. And now let's go through there and print all these outputs. 
and let's bring this window over here so you can actually see this. Very nice. And there you have it. The program is complete. So you now know how to make a distinct list of random numbers. Congratulations. This is an awesome video. There was a lot of pointers in there. You have to practice them. Remember, practice makes the expert. Take your time. Um, if you have comments, leave them below. The source code to this video is in the comments. Uh, please download, uh, walk through it until you understand it thoroughly. Then you too will become the master. Okay team, we'll see you back in the next video.